War in Ukraine, the 30th of September. Today's song is aimed at the Kremlin and Putin. It's Edwin Starr, War. News. We have reports of a Ukrainian strike against a missile artillery ammunition storage facility at Kotluban. Ukraine is reported to have struck the facility as Iranian missiles were arriving. Russian sources claim to have intercepted 125 Ukrainian drones. Some of the satellite imagery would indicate a fire north of this base. We cannot really say anything about this strike without further information. With the available information, it is possible Ukraine struck and caused some damage. It is for now more likely they struck on the outskirts of the base and we have limited damage. As more information filters in, the outcome should become more clear. Denmark has announced a pledge to support Ukrainian defense production with 575 million euros. Russian defense spending is expected to reach $140 billion in 2025, up from $110 billion this year. In Austria, it looks like the far-right party Freiheitliche Partei Österreich or FPÖ, or in English the Freedom Party of Austria, will get around 29% of the votes ahead of the conservative Austrian People's Party, which will get around 26%. The FPÖ was created by former Nazis in 1955-56. It has a friendly stance towards Russia. It wants to end sanctions on Russia, possibly leave the EU, and also leave the air defense collaboration called Sky Shield. The last time they were in government, several EU countries stopped sharing intelligence with Austria, as there were leaks to Russia. It for now looks unlikely they can form a government, as they have limited other parties that want to form a government together with them. Right-wing, anti-democratic forces are on the rise in the Western world, and that is a problem. They are using democratic institutions to introduce anti-democratic legislation. Immigration is a cause, as is the war in Ukraine. The way to counter this is via a good economy and dispelling false information. Those forces die when they don't have some crisis they can use or they can try and create one. This is another reason why it is so important to help Ukraine win, as expelling Russia from Ukraine will diminish Russia as a rallying point for such forces. The situation on the ground, weather today, Kharkiv, partly cloudy, 24 degrees Celsius, Svatova, partly cloudy in the morning, then sunny, 27 degrees Celsius. Donetsk city, partly cloudy in the morning, then sunny, 26 degrees Celsius. Kherson city, cloudy in the morning, clearing up towards the evening, 27 degrees Celsius. The Ukrainian general staff reported 165 combat engagements yesterday. Today they have reported 153 combat engagements in the last 24 hours. Kursk area. We have Ukrainian attacks west of their incursion with confirmed limited gains at Veseloye. We have Russian attacks at the western part of the Ukrainian incursion and Ukrainian attacks at the northern part of their incursion. I have no confirmed changes. We can expect ongoing fighting. Information remains limited and it is very hard to verify. North of Kharkiv, we had three Russian attacks reported, no confirmed gains. Russian attacks continue north of Lipsy and in the Vovshansk area. Ukrainian sources report that the Understrength Division, the 68th, 
is expected to be deployed to the front line during October. We have limited fighting and it is unlikely that will change over the coming week. The situation is stable. Kupiansk Svatova area. Here we had 13 Russian attacks reported. I have no confirmed Russian gains since yesterday. Russian sources claim gains at Andrivka, but they are not confirmed, nor likely at this time. Russian attacks are ongoing, but they are struggling to make additional gains. While the general situation from the Russian penetration towards the Oskil River is concerning, it is likely Russian forces will struggle to supply and bring forward fresh forces in that area. I assess the situation as stable. Kremina area. Here we had 12 Russian attacks reported, no confirmed Russian gains. The Russian areas of offensive operations have not changed. They are northwest of Makivka, at Makivka and Nevska, and east southeast of Tarny. Russia is struggling to take full control over Makivka and Nevska. The situation is stable. Sivarsk salient, Bakhmut, Toretsk. At the Svarsk salient, the Ukrainian general staff reported one Russian attack. Other sources would put Russian attacks to around three. Russian attacks continue on the eastern side of the salient and only intermittently do we see Russian attacks at the southern part. No changes, the situation remains stable. At Shasivyar we had eight Russian attacks reported. I have no confirmed Russian gains since yesterday. Russian attacks continue direction Bilahora, which is an important position, but they are making no gains in that direction. We can expect ongoing fighting. Significant Russian gains are unlikely. Minor Russian gains are possible. The situation is assessed as stable. At Toretsk we had 11 Russian attacks. We have minor Russian gains inside Toretsk. I have no other reported Russian gains. We have ongoing fighting, but Russian forces are struggling to make significant gains here. The situation is assessed as stable. Donetsk city area, Pokrovsk sector. Here we had 28 Russian attacks reported. Russian forces made gains south of Novohorodivka, which is north of Selidova. It is also likely that Russian forces made some limited gains in the Krasny Yar area, which is east-southeast of Pokrovsk. Russian forces are pushing towards Selidova, but they are making very slow gains. For Russia to be able to attack Pokrovsk itself, they will need to capture Selidova and then push northwest towards Dashensk. Only then would they be able to sustain a major attack on Pokrovsk. Alternatively, they could expand their gains northwest of their main penetration in the Krasny Yar area, but such a gain would likely give Russia a too limited front to be able to exert enough pressure against Pokrovsk. We can expect ongoing fighting. Intensity over the coming weeks looks like it will decrease somewhat, but likely remain heavy. The situation is assessed as stable at this time. West-northwest of Donetsk city. Here we had 25 Russian attacks and one Ukrainian counterattack. I have no confirmed changes here. The Ukrainian attack is likely a spoiling attack to hamper Russian attacks and their attempts to flank Hostre. Ukraine continues to hold a salient northwest of Krasnohorivka, which is a vulnerable position. The situation is stable west of Donetsk city and stabilized northwest of Krasnohorivka. At Vledor we had 17 Russian attacks reported. I have no confirmed Russian gains since yesterday. We have ongoing Russian attacks, but they seem to struggle to make further gains at this time. 
likely Ukraine has reacted and for now the situation is considered stabilized. The Ukrainian position at Vledar remains problematic and I continue to assess it will be difficult for Ukraine to hold that position. Probably Ukraine is now aiming to stall Russian attacks here while they prepare their next line of defense. This has been a Russian tactical gain and it is hard to see any strategic implications at this time. Conclusions the number of Russian attacks are again decreasing and it looks like the number of attacks above 180 is now starting to be somewhat intermittent. Based on previous Russian attack patterns, we can expect a decline, but we cannot say how deep that will be. It also looks like the Russian number of attacks does not really correspond with Russian pressure. I can only say that we have indications of this and so I can only have some confidence in this assessment at this time. We should get a clearer picture over the coming week. In general, no significant changes at the front line. At Kharkiv and the Svarsk salient we have only limited fighting. We have ongoing Russian attacks at Kupiansk, Svatova, Kremina, Shasivyar and Toretsk, but they are not making any significant gains or even limited gains. Rather, most Russian attacks are stalled at this time. In the Pokrovsk direction, the battle is now for Selidova, and we can expect Russian attacks there. Any Russian gains are likely to happen in or around the Selidova position. It also looks like they are trying to push northwest from their salient against the high ground in that area. I expect we will see limited Russian gains and likely they will not change the general situation here over the coming week. At Vledar, the Ukrainian situation is tactically difficult, but it is unlikely that the situation here will have strategic implications. Russian forces would have to advance about 20 kilometers for that to happen, which looks unlikely at this time. We should start seeing the trend of Russian attacks solidifying over the coming week. Either they can sustain a high number of attacks that intermittently will only slowly decrease and they can sustain significant pressure. That will give some Russian gains. That would indicate that Russian forces are stronger than my previous assessment. What I think is more likely is that we will see a significant amount of Russian attacks, but a general decrease in Russian gains, meaning a decrease in the Russian pressure. I think it is probable we will also see a decrease in the number of Russian attacks, but here it is less certain when we can expect to see that. For now, Russian forces are conducting a significant amount of attacks, but the overall situation remains stable. End of report.